Hello, in this video I just want to have some, uh, I'll put some links in the description of course, and just have a look at the Archaeometallurgy or Mesoamerican Metallurgy. So, I can recycle, okay, so I'll put the link, I just posted this earlier today on Mohs Hardness Scale, where, uh, for instance, limestone would be 3 to 4, but copper and, well, I, I did a video on this, it's, it, you know, like for instance, glass is 5.5, which is harder than on Mohs hardness scale than limestone. This Mohs hardness scale is really uh, nothing. There's a nothing burger. Uh, this is a totally incorrect way to look at the way uh, that tools shape one another. For instance, diamond is at the top, but bang, hit a diamond with a hammer on an anvil. The, the anvil of a hammer doesn't shatter. What you get is diamond dust. This is a nothing burger. But... Um, I'll, I'll put a link in the description where I go into a more detailed one in regards to uh, what actual copper was being used back in the time. Uh, but even see some people saying you can't use steel to cut, well we can't use copper, but these is actually both uh, quite false. Um, link will be in the description where I go into this infamous uh, replica of the Sphinx's nose and the problems with it, both on the mainstream view on there because I was using pure copper, but also on the uh, alternative viewpoint on there where really there's so many um, essential points of information are missing from there. For instance, all the Egyptian chisels are copper alloys, which makes them harder than pure copper. But even by using Mohs scale and, and even using copper chisels, and there's a lot of criticisms can be made about this reconstruction, but pure copper can cut harder stones. Um, such as limestone, but it's essentially the same on Mohs hardness scale as well. But the point is that what this uh, so when copper is extracted from the ground, it does not come out pure. It comes out; it's part of a mix of minerals. And so, for instance, copper, gold, and silver will be found. This is how it comes out of the ground. Now, every once in a while, people will pull out a gold nugget, but even those gold nuggets are not pure. They come in. Uh, for instance, this is what it's called peacock ore, which is basically one of the main forms of copper ore. It's mixed with tin, gold, silver. This is how it's extracted out. You don't find pure copper from the ground. You have you have to go through some advanced metallurgy to uh, get these out. So again, just examples of of how ore actually comes from the ground. Uh, you sometimes you get alluvial gold, which is pretty pure, but it's usually mixed with silver and other elements as well. Very very rare to get um, of the smallest size you might get almost pure but this is not the way things work it's very very well basically uh, never happens now there are some little pockets here or there but you cannot build an industry on relying on finding whether it's pure gold silver copper tin from the ground it just doesn't work that way so what we have is arsenical copper which is significantly harder than copper uh, that's the copper from the cyanide is rich in arsenic up in um, Anatolia, it's uh, rich in nickel, again it's not pure copper, and Peru, so Mesoamerica, so South and Central America, just going to bundle them together, and they, uh, Chile and Peru are some of the main sites in South America to get copper, it doesn't come out pure, it's arsenical copper. So here you see like an old alchemical chart, and the, and the, the basics of, well also the planets, but uh, Copper, iron, gold, mercury, silver, tin, and lead. These are the standards across the world for metalworking, especially in the ancient times. And mercury, Roman, uh, Hermes, guide and weights of measures by coincidence, but mercury. Now, why is mercury? This is cinnabar. This red ore is where you get mercury from. We can find it in Mesoamerica, the tomb of Palenque. That's uh, cinnabar dust all over that tomb. Very important in China as well, ancient parts of the world. You can get mercury just sweating out of the cinnabar there. It's also a nice connection because the pyramid where next to the terracotta warriors, uh, on the analysis that they have done, still hasn't been opened, but you can c compare that to the pyramid of a feathered serpent. Both of them have uh, seemed to... So, hasn't been opened, but there are suggestions based on the uh, analysis of the, what they have taken out that there, probably, there could be a, a pool of liquid mercury in there. Some suggest it could be a, a map where the liquid mercury lock forms an uh, ocean map. 
but it has also been found in the pyramid of the feathered serpent so liquid mercury and other amazing metallurgy through this place now that go so most often in the community uh they'll bring up articles such as this now these articles uh well are written by journalists who probably aren't you know the, the most learned in these topics and they tend to take sound bites and now uh for instance when they were studying this pyramid of a feathered serpent liquid metal mercury the liquid metal had no apparent practical purpose for ancient mesoamericans now this would then be repeated but well no because well or, you know, uh, i'm sure she's very skilled in anthropology but um, liquid mercury has a lot of applications especially comes to silver and gold now silver and gold china silver and gold in mesoamerica and mercury is still used now so for instance you get a piece of gold gold leaf there pour some mercury on it and it dissolves it soaks up that gold gold miners still form use mercury to form an amalgam just like merc uh, amalgam fillings in teeth uh, if you pour mercury into your panning and you want to get that gold out you pour liquid mercury in there the mercury essentially melts the gold they form an amalgam then you just boil the mercury away and you're left with because uh, gold has a much higher melting point than mercury the mercury boils off and you're left with gold or silver ore from there so that's how you extract it liquid mercury is very important in um, metallurgy still what back then and was now now that brings me okay so also again when you find minerals you don't find pure lead tin silver gold copper for instance what you find is in mineral form where it's a mixture so in uh so this galena um copper and bismuth you know most often depends on the location the mix of ore but we have bismuth in there and so in machu picchu this bronze knife and others is a uh it's a bronze knife well it's a copper bronze is just a copper alloy there is no pure metal like a element called bronze it's just a copper alloy and this is a bismuth bronze uh, knife here in Machu Picchu if you make a copper alloy it's harder than pure copper um, bismuth and tin bronze so traditional bronze is t 10 parts copper one part tin uh, back to most hardness scale but now uh, where are we okay so well again you can I'll, I'll just we'll go through the Wikipedia just to begin with. So arsenical copper. This is really you know you can you can Wikipedia it for instance. I'll put these links in the description. Also arsenical bronze and the properties of different variations of it. So often it said uh, gold. Uh, sorry, copper is this on most hardness scale and well it just it's just so 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 way off. It's you know it really is way off there. There's a lot of inform even on Wikipedia for God's sake. There's a lot of information. Now, metallurgy in pre-Columbian Mexico, uh, Mesoamerica, Mexico examples, I'll talk about this in here. Um, axe money, so what they find is these axe heads and seem to have been traded over large distances. You can, again, if you want to read through a little bit there, but uh, traditional copper work. Now, what we have is this um, tumbaga, tum, tumbaga, I'm not sure exact pronunciation, but this um, it shows the metallurgy now, for instance, the proportion of... Where are we? Okay, so it's basically gold and copper. There are different variations. You can read through the article there. But uh, it can be treated with a simple acid like citric acid to dissolve the copper off the surface. What remains is a shiny, nearly pure gold on top. So with some acids and some uh, basic under, you know, what, what we could now consider basic metallurgy, uh, you can make, how did they make these items? It's not really that much of a mystery. It's actually quite well documented and to that effect okay so i'm going to put a link in the description but uh most often the sources uh well a, a couple of i would call them dubious websites but uh, when you google you know if you want to google these things don't you have to remember to sort of google the opposite of what you want to find because google will deliver you to where exactly where you want to go but it's so often said uh oh, mainstream history as if it's a monolith as if they all are in agreement but if you want to have a look, so just go into Google and then type in Google Scholar. Okay, Google Scholar is a specialized search engine and it will take you to, uh, it's a better way to find uh, proper papers in regards to that. So now, um, Mesoamerican Metallurgy. Okay, it's order. Yep, 
that's what I meant, Mesoamerican metallurgy. So what you can find is that there, you know, there has been a lot of work and a lot of papers on there, uh, just like the, your typical um, history article in the Guardian and these other, you know, trash papers. Uh, they're very short, um, and again, the the journalists writing them don't really know what they're, you know, they're not the best people to be transmitting this information. So go into Google Scholar. You can find lots and lots of papers about this. The, the, the mainstream monolithic history is actually quite co more complex and detailed in there. And you can find a lot of proper articles, papers, um, and research that has been gone into here. Now, I can't put this link in the description because it takes me directly there. But even just on Google, Archaeometallurgy in Ancient Mesoamerica, University Press of Colorado. And now if we go to page 15... And there are some interesting points in here as well, because again, even amongst these, you need to, you know, double check the double checking, so to speak. And uh, copper bell. Now, this is an interesting one because this will be, look, for instance, I detail this on page 15. And because there's a bit of a paradox here as well, so it's a. It's the page. Okay, so metallurgy in Mexico. Okay, this, uh, the objects produced during the earliest phase beginning around AD 600 consist mostly of small bells and pins made of pure copper. Now, ding, 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 that rings a bell because a uh, warning light, because you don't, this would not be the earliest period of it because this would suggest that if they've got pure copper, that they understand uh, how to purify the copper ore. But, uh, and then unique uh, properties of sound to, to make these other bells by alloying copper with tin and arsenic. No, well actually copper with tin and arsenic would come first because that's how it is from the ground. You would have to have a lot more skill to make pure copper. It doesn't just emerge from there. But it's still worth a, a good read in, in there. So good copper and the... You don't want pure copper. Uh, if you're going to work... Firstly, you'd have to know how to make it. So that again, it doesn't emerge from the ground. They're not going to be trading vast quantities of pure copper because well that implies they have uh, some sort of skill in in there so that also rings a bell now uh, yeah so the metallurgy of Mesoamerica even just on the Wikipedia and again this really you know for those uh, air quotes uh, researchers talking about these things bring up Mohs hardness scale there's a, so much more to this it is a, a very you know uh, important Without this information, there is no story. You know, uh, you need to really look in, into these things. And again, because it doesn't suit a certain narrative, um, it's either excluded. Now, for those who have only been in a short time, well, fair enough. But for those who have been doing it for decades and lead people on tours, I would say, well, either you're an incompetent researcher or you're covering up information while accusing others of. Uh, so, for instance, you know, the mainstream cover-up. Well, you know, just go into Google Scholar. Uh, you look through through there and you see how what the mainstream is actually saying does not um, tally up with what the uh, alternative say about what the mainstream is saying. Even that goes for ancient Egyptian history. So so often I hear words put into the you know official Egyptian, and when I say official, I say you know that's in air quotes as well because there is quite a bit of still argument and difference um, in between. Very, various scholars uh, who in there, and I say they, you know, they, they don't just make, uh, you know, they, they're sort of evidence based, and they put their, you know, it has to be peer reviewed, and so they're argue, so what they present is, is argued about, and so whether it's Mesoamerican Egyptian history, the actual mainstream historic, um, historic historical monolith does not exist. There is a lot of information and published papers out there. Getting your sources from a few internet websites with with a clear bias in one way uh, doesn't tell the story any any better than it would be to get uh, get it from the Guardian. So, what's happening is we don't have pure copper; it's copper alloys, and that would also and the types of copper alloys raise an interesting question to their skill level in met metallurgy, of because it's it, it would suggest that they knew how to create these metals and they understood the properties of them which would go against the so-called mainstream view, which is not really the mainstream view. 
Anyway, Metallurgy, Mesoamerica, have a good one.